This episode is brought to you by Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard of Anchor, you should definitely check them out. It's a super easy tool that anyone can use to create and distribute their podcast. It has everything you need, and you can do it all from your computer or even your phone. Need your podcast cover art? There's a tool. Music and sound effects? They have you covered. Want to record on the fly? It's easy with the app. Now you may be saying to yourself, I already have a podcast. No worries. Just create your account, upload, and publish to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Looking for some walking around money? Anchor connects you with advertisers who match your brand. It's a one-stop shop for all of your podcasting needs. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello and welcome to Biz Quick. I'm Corey. And I'm Julie. And on the podcast today, we have Terry and Olivia Harris. They own West Tennessee Canine and they're out of Memphis, Tennessee. That's right. You're listening to Biz Quick. This is where Julie and Corey provide quick and useful information to small business owners. Biz Quick is the podcast where small business owners get to showcase their businesses and receive expert advice and guidance in areas many entrepreneurs struggle with. And you, the listener, get solutions, tips, and tricks on real world topics that many small business owners face. Julie and Corey are the experts small businesses hire when they need solutions. And the Biz Quick podcast is just one way they deliver those solutions. Let's start the show. Welcome, you two. Hello. Hello. Hey, it's really great to have you on the podcast today. Thanks for joining us. Good to be here. Very good to be here. Thank you guys for having us. How are you today? Uh, doing good, busy, uh, lots of dogs to train, lots of people working. Uh, uh, COVID has not uh, hurt us at all. It's actually boosted things. We're busier than we probably have ever been. Well, You've talked about being busy and you've talked about your dogs. So let's just go straight to telling our listeners what it is that West, West Tennessee Canine does. So we teach people leadership through dogs. Um, that's kind of the e- easy answer. We do train dogs, lots of dogs, uh, uh, 4,500 dogs a year. But instead of just teaching people how to train their dogs or just training the dogs and giving them back to the people, uh, we teach leadership. Um, We do that by teaching people how to be the center of their dog's world, um, by being uh, the the master communicator for their dog. So you're you're not just training the dogs, you're the the people, the the owners are in there with the dogs. Right. Now we do board and train programs so the dogs stay with us for one to three weeks. Um, And depending on how long they stay with us, uh, the owners, when they get home, have to do less work. So the longer the dog is with us, the less work the owner has to do um, at home. Does that make sense? Yes, I think so. Yeah, it does. I'm going to guess that one of the direct benefits of COVID, which sounds, which is a really weird way to say that, a direct benefit of COVID, but you probably have experienced an uptick because people are spending so much more time with their pets. That is correct. That's correct, yes. <laughs> yeah, we talked to a pet food manufacturer um, recently, and he said that business has been off the charts. And I think it's people are just recognizing how much more they can get from their pets by having them well-trained and um, well-fed. Well, and yeah. I also think that, I mean, there's, there's that huge push towards the beginning of the pandemic for people to... Uh, temporarily adopt an animal, you know, so they were, they weren't lonely in the shelters or whatever it was. Um, mm-hmm. and, you know, that turned into probably record numbers of owners as well. So I don't know if, if, have you seen that a lot of new owners this year? Yeah, we've had a lot of puppies. We have a really good puppy program that we're booked out through probably January. So a lot of, a lot of puppies. We haven't seen an influx of shelter dogs, but definitely a lot of puppies. How long have you guys been in business? How long has the West Tennessee canine existed and what was the um, impetus for starting the business? So it's been an official business, what, five and a half years? years. About right at five and a half years as far as a, you know, sure enough, this is what we're doing all the time business. Um, I've trained dogs, I'm 48 and I've trained dogs since I was a teenager, horses, dogs, about any animal I could get my hands on. Um, I would say the thing that, that made it uh, something we're going to do is Olivia here was not my wife then. She's my best friend, but she was my wife. Um, told me I should do it, and I said it would never work. 
Um, and she just kept on and on about, you should, no, you should do it. You're good at this. I'm like, who would pay me to train dogs? It's, <laughs> it is yeah. so easy. There's nothing to it. It's, nobody's <laughs> going to pay me to train dogs. And I was in the construction industry and I was doing pretty well. Um, but I'm thinking, I'm doing the math. We're doing jobs in the tens of thousands as a construction company. And I'm thinking that per hour, per dog, how many dogs I have to do. I'm like, there's not enough hours in the day. So she just kept on and on. Well, why don't you just try it? Yeah, well, that, why don't you just try it? What will it hurt? Why don't you just try it? And there was some life changing things that went on. So I was like, you know what? I have nothing to lose at this point. So I'm definitely going to try it. And here we are. And every time we still say, you know, this dog training thing just might work. Yeah, every time every, we play, probably say that once a week, at least, you know what, this dog thing, dog training thing, uh, it just might work. Just might. <laughs> <laughs> we might have a thing here. We might have a thing going here. <laughs> so now is this the, both of you are 100% in the business? Yes. Yes, we're both 100% in the business. Um, she has kind of had a backseat role. Olivia's kind of had a backseat role. Um, until recently, she's been employed. Um, she resigned from her job a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, she, your last day. End of September. Okay, so a couple weeks ago, end of September. And uh, it was more of the timing. The company she was working with was, was really good to her. Um, and it's trying to find a good time to like jump out um, as, as they went around. But in doing that, uh, she's still doing contract work with them like she didn't want a job but she's like but I will do this for you and they accepted what she said so she her foot's kind of in both worlds since it seems like you, you kind of just you started the business just to just see you know like you just jumped right in both feet um, I'm sure you learned some lessons along the way in terms of things you could have done better the first time or you know things you wish you would have done better the first time um, can you kind of walk us through like what the, you know, that first six, 12, 18 months was like? Yeah, it was pretty scary. Um, it was, I remember the first Thanksgiving that I was in business, I was at home with about $74 in the bank. Mm -hmm. Thinking to myself, this is clearly not going to work. Not going to happen. And, you know, but I just, I kept pressing on. I, I knew that if I just kept doing what I was doing, like, and not stop, that eventually I would move forward and, and things would happen. Um, you know, I would, I would get dogs and just train them for free. Like if somebody had a dog to put in my hands, I would take them, train them, video them and uh, build some content. You know, content was, was super important. I built the whole thing on social media. I didn't have money for a website. I didn't have money for any of that. So it was this whole thing was built on free social media. You want to add to that? And donuts. And donuts. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, who got the donuts? The dogs? No. So uh, he had this idea of just to get his name out there, um, take donuts, really good donuts, like the really good donuts. And you just put your business card on it and take it to the Hollywood feeds or pet, store, pet yeah. stores and vets and say, here you go. Y'all look busy. Have a good, you know, have a treat on us. And then we'd start coming out back in consistently and consistent consistency was the key of doing that, getting your face in front of everybody, but not just, Hey, I'd like to put my brochures here. Hey, Hey, can we, you know, can you refer us without them getting to know us? And so it was built on that relationship. And so as we started dropping off more donuts, they'd start asking us more questions and then, Hey, what do you think about this? And Hey, can we have some of your brochures? You know, Hey, we sent this dog to you because it's absolutely crazy in this office and maybe you can help. And so, we started with, you know, the social media, but with the donuts, it brought relationship. Yeah, I, I'm going to, I definitely want to talk about the donuts, but I want to go back to that $74 in the bank account. Yeah. Because that is a, that's a true entrepreneur moment, right? Where uh, the easy thing to do would have been to just give up and go do something else where you knew, you know, the way that you'd always made money before in the past, but instead you press forward, which is, um, that, that's what an entrepreneur does as well. I, we're going to make, we're going to figure out how to make this work. So kudos to you on that and a uh, brilliant strategy with the donuts because people love donuts. Yeah. And, and, and we found out and I found out in the beginning, like dog training is not about dogs. It, it's about people. It's about relationships. It's about building a relationship and caring about the people more than you care about the dogs. 
And, and that has to be true. If, you're, if you care about the dogs more, then you're just a weird dog person. Like, go open a shelter. <laughs> <laughs> We care about how the dogs are behaving at home and how they're affecting people's lives because dogs are, are extremely stressful. Dogs can be stressful. A bad dog can, we've seen people get divorced over dogs. We've seen people split up. We've seen, we've seen so much stuff happen over a dog. Over a dog. That's just being a bad dog in, in the house. Um, that Really quickly, I learned it's not about the dog at all. It's, it's about the, the people and the relationships. And that's what's built the business is that we really do focus on the people the people have to come first and then the dogs slide right in there once you once you make your focus the people and, and working with the people training the people and just being there for a sounding board a lot of it's just being there so they can vent to you um the dogs are the easy part and i'm i'm not really an animal person myself i don't you know i'm i'm indifferent you know, some people like they, they don't totally, they don't understand it. They're like, how do you not love my dog? How do you not love my, you know, whatever? And I'm like, well, I'm just not an animal person. Um, so for me, you know, I'd probably never have a pet because I know that that's just not my thing. It probably wouldn't get the attention that, you know, it deserves or needs. Have you ever had to have like a hard conversation with a dog owner to be like, hey, maybe you should look into finding a new home? For the dog owner or for the... Either or. Somebody, <laughs> somebody needs to go somewhere else. Somebody needs to go. <laughs> yeah, every, every day. Like every day, that's, that's one of my conversations. You know, we do, I screen, excuse me, I screen pretty good. Uh, when the people go online and fill out our contact form, I, I get enough information where I know the questions to ask. And I, and I kind of know where they're going. It, it kind of sets them up for, for the pre-sale, for lack of a better term. But as I'm talking to them and they're telling me, you know, our house is great. You know, we just had a baby. We want the baby to grow up with this dog. We just got this dog, and it's driving us crazy. We're not sleeping because of the baby. Uh, we can't leave the dog alone. It's, it's tearing up everything. We, all these problems, that's the first thing I say. You've only had this dog a few months, and people have to come first. Like, your, your, your well-being and your sanity has to come first. So it might be a good idea to find the dog another home. Or if we have two dogs that are fighting in a house, and they're both good dogs separately, together they're not, like, don't pay for thousands of dollars worth of training. You have to look at the stress level. You might want to consider rehoming the dog. So I have that conversation every day because it's a real conversation. It, it would be considered in, tr in the training world as an easy way out, but it's the reality of, it. you know, you're going to put thousands and thousands of dollars into this dog that you already really don't want. And you're hoping and, and doing that. And a lot of it's out of guilt, but and hoping when you do that, you're going to have this, beautiful creature that comes home and that's not what happens yeah so yes we have that conversation with people every day guilt is a big motivator right yeah. and and pets have a way of like really really pulling at people's heartstrings or making them do things they wouldn't normally do do you do you think that people understand that there is a psychology to dogs yes well i would say we understand that um, and it's kind of like, kid, they're kind of like kids, you know, um, when you give children, even though they don't like the structure, but when you give kids structure, they thrive. So do dogs, you know, when you give them structure and order and routine, you know, he's very routine. He's very routine and structured and he thrives in that. And so do dogs. Um, so there is that psychology behind it. It's not just, oh, 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 pet me. You know, they have to have order and they're better when they have order and they, you know, when just like. Um, and um, when you're in an employer and you let your employees know, this is what I expect of you, then they can jump with that and they can run with that. But if they don't know, they're just like, oh, all over the place, so are the dogs. Yeah, that's the same. You can make a really strong correlation to having a small business as well, right? When you have that consistency in your actions and you're um, continuously, you're paying attention to the right things, then the business starts to thrive. So it's a, there's a strong correlation there between how you work with a dog or how, you know, how you treat your dog versus how you treat, you know, yourself and your family and your business even. Right. And systems and protocols, you know, dogs, when dogs come through this door, the whole building is set up around them. There's systems and protocols in place to make that dog a better dog every one physical step at a time as it walks this building every day. Everything is set up to learn and to get better. And, and just like in small businesses, you know, you can have, have a small business and I've had several, some have done, done well, some haven't. But if, if you can't, 
put systems and protocols in place and structure in, in, in a way that you can teach that to other people and you can duplicate that, then you might as well just do your one man thing because you're never gonna grow. Um, that same thing applies with dogs. If, if we have one dog or two dogs or 10 dogs, like I don't care how many you have, but you're still putting the same systems and protocols in place over and over and over again. Systems and protocols. Now you're talking Corey's language. <laughs> I see he perked up. Did you like, he jumped up like, Oh my God, we're going to talk about something exciting. Systems, <laughs> protocols. And, and I was going to say, I'm sure some of our listeners would love for us to sit around and talk about dogs all day, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and in the business, it's like model and what we do, dogs are probably a third, you know, Communication is a third, and systems and protocols are a third. And dogs might eat, there might be even something else to squeeze in there to make dogs even a lesser part of them. You know, the dogs are are such a dogs are easy. Dogs are really easy. They're they're easier than people. All we're doing is patterning new behaviors, correcting old behaviors, patterning new behaviors. But the growth of the business comes because of relationships and putting systems and protocols in place that work and that can be duplicated. All right, we got our friend Chad Felderhoff back on the program to tell you about his company, Munster Milling. Hey guys, Chad Felderhoff here with Munster Milling Company. We're a fourth generation owned family business. We've been making dog food for four generations in Munster, Texas. We've got, uh, we've got our 12 days of Christmas coming up. We're gonna have a new special every day starting December 11th, running all the way through December 22nd. Even your pet needs to enjoy the 12 days of Christmas. We'll have uh, multiple specials, anywhere from 30% off to uh, a free one pound bag of beef liver. So you can learn more by going to munstermilling.com, sign up for the email, sign up for the text alerts, get it shipped directly to your house, sign up for auto ship and save even more. Thanks, Chad. Now back to the show. Let's talk about the people then, because one of the things that you said at, you know, towards the beginning of the podcast was it's about leadership uh, and training leadership for the, the, the dog owners. Can you talk about that a bit, like how you train that in, in the owners, your customers? When, when people get dogs, they, they get them and, and they treat them like a, um, a charity case. And the dog is suffering and they, they want to be the dog's friend. Um, and, and, and as I talk through this in your mind, you can relate it to the way we treat people. Um, so the, they, they feel sorry for the dog. Dog has been through this stuff and nobody really knows what the dog's been through, but we all have a story in our mind because it makes us feel better. That the dog's been through all this stuff. And so they bring the dog in and they become the dog's friend and they buy the dog all of this stuff and buy the dog a dog bed and the dog house and toys and treats and, and they're, it's everywhere because they want the dog to like them more. Okay. Um, you can liken it to hiring somebody and say, I'm going to start you out of the maximum salary because I want you to do better. You know, I, I, you grow on your own, but I'm just gonna start you out at the max because I just feel like that's what I'm supposed to do because I'm a nice guy. You know what happens, like if the person fails, they can't, they have to have something to, to uh, grow to or something to achieve. Dogs the same way. Like you, if you give, the, the dogs don't understand that uh, all that stuff correlates in our mind to love, um, it just, means nothing to the dog. So what the dog needs is leadership. The dog needs somebody saying, this is what you're supposed to do. Dogs react off of positive and negative pressures, okay? We give them all of this positive, okay? And, and they take that as, I can do whatever I want. And then they're biting and running out the doors. The big part of leadership, and, and you guys I'm sure know this, the big part of leadership and the hardest part of leadership is bringing correction. It's bringing structure and bringing correction when corrections do. Correcting at a level that it takes to stop an unwanted behavior, but not going high enough on a level uh, to discourage the dog per se. Does that make sense? It does. So yeah. You yeah. are setting yourself in a position of leadership because you're giving guidance, you're leading, you're, you're giving guidance with guidance to do, giving uh, guidance and reward. But then when things are going wrong or things, the dog's doing things that you don't want the dog to do, you're bringing correction, you're bringing a consequence, a punishment, um, you know, in line with what a dog can understand, but you're still bringing those things. 
Yeah, and with um, after each um, dog is here, let's say if it's here for one week or three weeks or four weeks, the owners come in and we show them exactly what we've done. We put the leash in their hand. We show them what it feels like to, you know, make that correction. But we, we, it's like transfer of power over to them. So that's where the leadership comes in with the people because we're showing them exactly what to do. And, you know, a lot of people, we have to remind people, just breathe. It's a dog, right. you know, but when they become more confident, you see it click in them where like, oh, I'm not going to screw this dog up. I can do this, but it just, it empowers them to, to take that leadership role. Um, but we, we spend that time with them, with each and every dog and each and every owner um, and show them what to do those basic steps. And then, you know, here's the leash, you know, and, and walk them through that, literally walk them through how to walk their dog. And it really does change their, their face even, you know? Yeah. And one quick thing to add to that is um, communication. Like how are we communicating with that dog? We can't speak dog. We have no idea what that dog is, how that dog is taking what we're saying. And so the leash is, is the communicator. The leash is the, the visual and physical thing that's communicating with that dog. Um, and, and getting people to understand that most of our first go home session is about an hour long. They never talk to the dog. They're telling the dog to do everything through that leash, through that vis visual and physical communicator. Um, and so now they have a way to communicate with the dog. You're not a good leader if you're not a good communicator. First and foremost, if I can't uh, explain to my folks and, and, and paint a clear picture of our future, what I'm asking them to do, then they're not going to do uh, what they need to do. Same thing with the dogs. I've never had to train a dog before. Like I said, I'm not an animal person, but I've had to train plenty of people. I'm going to assume that training a human is a lot harder than it is training a dog. So how... <laughs> and you can't use a leash. And you can't use a leash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As a matter of fact. <laughs> Take a trip to the zoo. You might see some young children on leashes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That is true. How, how do you deal with, I'll say, the problem owners? Most of, we don't get many problem owners because I pre-screen them. I want to make sure that they're a good fit for what we do. Very few, we get very few problem owners. Um, and, and, and problem owners, I guess you were say, you're talking about ones that just don't get with the program or, 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 or drop, drop their dog off and just ex expect a miracle to happen and they don't have to do anything on their end. That happens very rarely. It happened in the beginning because I didn't have as much content. So when folks call us, they have been on our social media. Um, they, they, they know us. They, they know what we do. Um, our, their contact form, I can read it and I can tell you whether they follow us or not. If they don't, I won't even book them. I'll say, go back and look at what we do, and then call me back. Um, so we don't run into that problem a lot because our, all the owners we all owners of the dogs we train really are pre-qualified because the last thing I want to do is charge somebody a lot of money to train their dog and then not be a good fit. If you don't know how we train, you don't know the tools we use, uh, you don't know our philosophies, and you just bring the dog in hoping for the best, um, we won't take you as a client. You have to get to know us first. Mm -hmm. And if you and if they've paid for some reason and they slip through the cracks, I'll give them the money back because it's not going to be a win-win. Interesting. Do you, um, is, are most of your clients that you get referrals or are they, do you get them through advertising? Like what's your, what's your client acquisition process look like? Um, it's about 50, 50. So we get a lot of referrals from vets, from pet stores. Um, most of the, most of our clients are coming uh, through, uh, friends and family seeing dogs out or people walking their dogs seeing other dogs like oh my gosh your dog's so well behaved hey call these people and so they put the bug in the ear but then it's social media so it's really hard even though I asked the question it's really hard to separate because everybody goes through our social no, no matter if they if they call just a cold call hey I found your card I asked you a question everybody goes through social so on the contact form almost everybody says Facebook or Instagram or uh, YouTube, how they heard of us. Uh, so it's really hard to pick that out exactly how it's, it's a combination of all of it, I think. Interesting, interesting, yeah. I would imagine that the referral, like your strongest referral is a really well-behaved dog and, yes. and you know, other people seeing that. 
Yes. Yeah. What for people who might be starting off a you know a business or or looking to make that plunge? What piece of advice would you give to anybody out there? Just any kind of business. Any kind of business. I mean, you jumped in with both feet. You know, what advice would you? Yeah. Give? So I, when I started, like always, have some income before you just jump in. Um, we built this whole thing debt free. We paid as we went, um, and I had a job while I was building the business. It's like. You know, it was dumb not to. It takes a little bit of the pressure off. It wasn't a great job, but it was still a little income coming in. Um, if you. Well, at first you worked out of the house. Yeah. And then so when he's talking about building this place debt free, you know, we have a, a training center, an actual facility um, that we've been in a little over a year, but we worked on it as we went. So it wasn't, you know, taking out these huge loans and, you know, I would start with what you got. Yeah, start start with start with what you can reasonably do without bankrupting yourself, knowing that the likelihood of it not going well is pretty high. Um, and then also, don't stop just because you you hit a, a stumbling block. Like you know, I looked at it like this: I'd never I've trained dogs my whole life, but I had never um, done it really for money. I just helped people out, so I looked at it like this: I charged very little um, because I. I was using their dogs to learn with. And so the more dogs I did, the more confident I got, the more I increased my price. So, so start, start small. Um, I did a lot of work for free just to build, just to build social, just, just to get moving, you know, cause if you're, especially social is such a ginormous part of things. I wish this was around 20 years ago when I had other businesses, it would have made my life so much easier than trying to find mailing lists and door to door, like, you know, uh, or, drive traffic to your, to your website. It, it would have been so much easier. Um, but s stay moving, stay, stay consistent with what you're doing. Um, don't get discouraged when you hit the stumbling block or somebody comes in and, and tells you you can't do it. Uh, and get up and work every day. Mm -hmm. Every day, get up and do something. No matter how, much discour how discouraged I was, I would get up, grab a dog, do a social media post, um, do something working toward my goal, just one thing. And it would make me feel better doing that. That's great advice. All right, we are out of time. So could you tell our listeners how they can find you? Yeah, you can find us online, uh, West TN K9. Um, and you can find us on Facebook. Facebook. And Instagram. Yep, both West Tennessee K9, Facebook and Instagram, um, as well as YouTube. We have about 100 how-to videos on YouTube, completely free. You can train your dog for free. Great. Thanks for joining us, and thanks to our listeners. And you can find all the information on West Tennessee K9 in the show notes. And you can connect with us on social media. We're on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can reach out to us on our websites, sbpace.com and bizquickpodcast.com. And while you're out there, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast and like us and give us a review. We love feedback. That's right. And you can also reach out about any topics that you might want us to cover. Or if you want to be a guest, reach out to us through our website, bizquickpodcast.com. And we've got a book out. It's Seriously, Now What? A Small Business Guide to Disaster Preparedness. It comes with a companion workbook, which you can get off our website. And you can find that on Amazon, or you can click through our sites to get there. I'm Julie. And I'm Corey. And this was BizQuick, helping small businesses across America.